Woj reported but, you know, today the was that the GM of the Rockets, Daryl Morey, is making all of his players who are not named Harden available in trade talks, the weekend, including Chris Paul. It was Friday. very good friends with LeBron. And then first any thing chance morning, that he Saturday, could wind up oh, with LeBron day. with the Lakers? I was mad. Very highly unlikely. Uh, the Lakers would have to use all their cap space, that type of a deal, and also trade draft picks. Frankly, they can do better uh, than Chris Paul. I think they'll have their sights on some younger players. Pairing two 34-year-olds who are in long-term contracts are difficult. Um, but look for the Lakers to make some other inquiries with other players who might be in the trade. Uh, and lastly, uh, relative to the finals, the current holder of the Spike Lee chair of fans getting involved in games as a league, we understand, has now spoken to the Raptors about Drake's behavior during the games. Is he going to be an issue? Are they going to get him a seat belt? What are the plans during the finals? Something between sitting quiet with his hands in his lap and giving the coach a massage somewhere in that zone is more appropriate uh, Drake can cheer and be uh, and be happy but he can't step on the court he can't step to the bench which is the rule for everybody including you Keith if you had those seats he used to have those seats for the Clippers but that's again another story Brian Windhorst at the finals great thanks for coming they've played rounds of golf in the past and years ago Kate Manning shared a conversation he had with Tiger Woods that on cold snap counts, he'd say Tiger to snap on one and Phil to snap on two. It was a reference to their world golf rankings when Tiger was number one and Mickelson was number two. A few years later, after playing in Denver, Manning told Tiger the biggest difference with the Broncos offense and the Colts offense is the snap count. McElroy is on one. Tiger That's is on words. two. Then Tiger the looked at Peyton in the eye and said, uh, I'm going to get that fixed. Woods soon won two events and reclaimed the number one the ranking. The and then he called Peyton to make sure Tiger team, was back on one the in the snap count. And reunited in Ohio, the pair playing together in a pro-am at the Memorial, all smiles, and Tiger was feeling really good, especially on the front nine today. Now, Peyton has the second most wins in NFL history. Tiger has the second most major wins. They are connected. They both started college in 1994. Check out this shot from Tiger on the fourth hole. Comes so close to an ace. Happy about that. I was inches good. from the good cup. Had a great season. Now, Peyton like underwent Biden's spinal fusion Peyton. surgery, came back to win a Super Bowl. Right. Tiger right. underwent back right. fusion right. surgery and came back to win the Masters. The Peyton on 18. Season. Yeah, yeah that's a birdie putt going down. Like Afterwards, so Peyton true. talking yeah. about injuries, coming yeah. back, yeah. and then yeah. winning. I think the most impressive thing is how he's been able to adjust and be adaptive to playing in a new physical state. And that's kind of what I did. You know, maybe to use a baseball analogy, I couldn't throw the 100 mile an hour fastball anymore, but you could still work the outside edges of the plate and you could still strike a guy out that way. And he, he struck a lot of guys out down there at Augusta a few weeks ago and uh, came home with the win. And so that, that's what's, uh, that to me is the most impressive thing is how adaptive he's been. He's gotten so much better. I mean, when we, when we first played, uh, he was just kind of starting out the game. Um, but now that uh, he's retired, he played a lot more golf. And, uh, you know, that's, that's been you know, pretty cool for me to be able to, to uh, play with him throughout the years and um, to know that what he's he's gone through, uh, to see him get ready for the season um, and what he's been able to accomplish you know, after all the surgeries. And then, you know, to see, uh, you know, to, to walk around greatness like this, it's, it's always fun. And our favorite caddy, Michael Collins, joining us now. You had the chance to walk with Tiger and Peyton today. How would you describe that and the atmosphere around them? Well, the atmosphere was electric because between every hole, Peyton was signing all kinds of autographs and engaged with the crowd. When they were playing golf, Tiger and Peyton were needling each other and having fun. Tiger was really relaxed. Can I just tell you? On the front His nine, Tiger did not miss a fairway, folklore. did not miss a green, Father and on the fourth hole, the par three, almost had a hole in one. Ooh. I have rarely Shanghai seen Tiger Shanghai this loose and fun in a while, and if he plays like this during the tournament, the it's game down, over. Okay, but there's a big difference from a pro-am and then playing on Thursday. Based on what you saw from Tiger, I understand he was relaxed, but what do you expect to see tomorrow in round one from him? The fastest. 
Yeah, it's funny. Even Tiger has a nickname for the guy who plays fantastic golf. He calls him Ranger Ricks. For Tiger Woods at this event, what's going to matter the most on Thursday during round one is finding the fairway. There's rain in the forecast, so if you get in that wet rough, it's going to be an issue even for Tiger Woods. But if he finds fairways, I expect Tiger to go was only as low as possible for the day. Yeah, we saw him struggle with that at Beth Page Black a couple weeks ago. He dominated on Jack's course two goals earlier in his, in his career, but his last win there was seven if years ago. Tiger is starting on the back now, nine first, being off just before 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. West Ham, always a pleasure, Newcastle Michael Collins. And Chelsea. I mean, he'll always be remembered as a Premier League fan's The waiting is nearly over. It's been eight days since the Warriors played a basketball game for the first time at their dynasty run. Clay Thompson and Golden State starting a final series on the road as game one tomorrow night in Toronto on ABC. And while Kevin Durant's going to be out, Boogie Cousins, we may see him early in the series. We'll see. Clay joining Rachel Nichols on the jump. You're having to face Kawhi Leonard. You are going to draw that assignment some of the time. What do you expect there, and how do you stop him from what you've seen in the first couple series? From watching Kawhi, I've learned he's very good at taking his time, playing with it by his own pace, and he's become such a great jump shooter. Mm -hmm. He's so long and athletic, he just gets to the spot and rise up. So it's going to be a challenge, and Warren for him, it's easier said than done. Got to make him uncomfortable. I know you don't Tyler care about United being United snubbed on the All-NBA team. Yeah. Oh, I care. Crazy I was about to say, but yeah. <laughs> $30 million dollars that you miss, yeah. you care about that, huh? Uh, I can't, the money's nice, but um, I'm just trying to build a resume. And I see uh, I see some other guys who play my position going up. You know, the Ray Lowes, Reggie Miller, Chris Mullen. I try to right. be in that mold. Right. They made, you know, three, four All-NBA teams. I'm trying to get to that level. I just wanted to make that team so badly. Um, just because it's a huge honor thing, you know. It's a, to be a top, recognized as a top 15 player in the best basketball league in the world. That's amazing, yeah. but um, like I said before, the opportunity to win a championship is greater, so. Well, game one of the finals has been very kind to the Warriors over the last four NBA Finals trips. Golden State has taken the first game every time against the LeBron team, too. The one difference, well, no LeBron, and as I mentioned, they'll have to start this series on the road and not at Oracle and not in Cleveland. Time to crunch the numbers to appreciate this Warriors dynasty run. Maybe changing. Now we've got the Warriors do it again and advance to their fifth consecutive NBA Finals. Don't discredit what you're watching. This Warriors run is special. Five straight finals appearances, something we haven't seen since the mid-60s when there weren't even 10 teams in the league. But just how impressive is Golden State's run? Under Steve Kerr, the Warriors have won 75 of their 99 playoff games, good for a 758 win percentage. Among teams to play in five straight postseasons, that is the highest winning percentage over a five-year span in NBA history. We come out and play our game. I think the sky's the limit for this team. And when you think that it can't get any better, think again. Durant for three. It's good. Kevin Durant from downtown. Since adding Kevin Durant to the fold, the Warriors are a ridiculous 44 and 10 in the playoffs. That 815 win percentage is the best over a three year span in the postseason in NBA history. Better than either of Michael Jordan's three peats or the Shaq and Kobe Lakers. Curry, deep three, puts it in. Mama, there goes that man. What makes Golden State so dangerous? Knowing that no lead is safe. A thrilling comeback win for Golden State. Over the last three postseasons, the Warriors are 7-6 and six when trailing by at least 15 points in any point in the game. During this same span, the rest of the NBA is a combined 13 and 146. A win percentage that is 8%. Play will take a three. Knocks it down. And when it comes to getting a quick run, no one beats the Warriors. The pace that the Warriors play at, it wears you out. They've recorded 54 10 to nothing runs in the playoffs, more than 20 occurrences than anyone else since the 2017 postseason. 
stop and appreciate this legendary Warriors run because you never know when it will happen again. The run continues tomorrow night. NBA Finals, they begin 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC and ESPN Deportes with the Warriors going for the three-peat and the Raptors in their first finals. The six will be popping. Our Game 1 coverage tips with NBA Countdown, 8.30. And can both be 